Hi from IT is clear. Today we can continue with module 2.1 part B. This is still on network configuration and we're looking at different technologies that go with networks and the internet. So we'll look at um, the sharing of files and folders on a network, so permissions, then user rights, what BitTorrent is, and also online services. So whenever you have a network, you will have different users. And because the different users are at different levels in a company, um, they should be granted different rights. Some people will have all the rights, like the boss, he can go and look at any file and maybe change any file, but the people like um, maybe your people that you do not want to look at all that information would not be given as many rights. So the different permissions are read, where you can only read or copy from a file or folder, write, when you can modify the contents of a file or folder, execute, that means you can run a program, list folder contents, so that allows you to look inside a folder, modify, is when you can read, write, and delete files and folders, and then full control, where you can do absolutely anything you like with the files and folders on the network. So let's look at the different user rights. Every network will, or a reasonably large network, will need an administrator, somebody who manages the whole network and adds new users, removes users, and controls the whole network. So he has, or she obviously, has full control. This person can install and, um, software and hardware drivers. They create and modify new users and groups, and they reset passwords. And they have full access to all the files and folders. Then you get your standard users. They can log onto their computer. They can run programs and customize their accounts and save the files in their user folders or common folders. They can change their own password but they are restricted from making systems changes. And often there will be some files and folders that they cannot access on the system. Think of the teachers in your school. They can access all the exam folders, but a standard user, the, the, all the learners obviously cannot. Next, we go to BitTorrent. Some of you may have used this. It's a very useful, way of downloading movies and it's a way of moving files around the internet. So it was done because um, some files that are very large, like movies, would take a lot of um, space on a server and it would also then take a lot of time if everybody was accessing one server and trying to download the movie from there or a big file. So a torrent file is actually a small piece of data that belongs to a bigger file. But you download that torrent file and you feed it, you put it into a BitTorrent client, which is just software, okay? Then it tells you, the file tells you what data is being downloaded and it tells the client where to go and find the data. A BitTorrent client is a a piece of software that accepts a torrent file and then it begins to download the data associated with it. So how it works, you have to get BitTorrent client software. Examples are MicroTorrent or BitComet. Then the BitTorrent client, that software, it splits a file into lots of small parts. All those little parts are downloaded separately from different computers and you can download a part of a file from anyone who even has that smallest part of that file on their computer. And any part of the file on your computer then becomes immediately available for others to download. So here's an example of BitTorrent software. So you can see that person is downloading a few files and there's one that they are that is still busy seeding and um, 
yeah, it shows you where the data is coming from, how many seeds. So the top one has 31 seeds. So it's being accessed from 31 different places. Now, the benefits of BitTorrent is that it's faster, cheaper, and more efficient to distribute large files this way. And it offers an effective use of available download bandwidth. As I said, you're not downloading the whole file from one server, which would need huge bandwidth. You're downloading the file from lots of computers all over the world. The other advantage is that BitTorrent clients are free. The risks, it's only legal if you have a license for the content that you torrent. So if you're downloading files um, that are movies and you don't have a license, you could be prosecuted. It's also a possibility that the downloads can be affected with malware. And BitTorrent is not anonymous. The files you download can be traced back to you. It's possible to download copyrighted material if you do not check the small print. The um, next thing we're looking at is online services. And this could be things like a weather service, RSS service, or a stock market watch service. So let's look at services that offer storage and syncing. So these are services that allow you to access files on all your devices from any location, whether you're connected to your local network or not. And examples are Dropbox, iCloud, OneDrive, and Google Drive. So remote network-based storage is like having an external hard drive. You can access the files whenever you are online. You can share the files. So you can give someone else access to the files or folders that you've uploaded onto the cloud. There's also file syncing, which means that um, whatever is happening on your hard drive, you can mirror that in the cloud. So whenever you change a file on your hard drive, it will immediately be saved into the cloud. So the cloud is holding a current updated version of whatever is on your hard drive. And as you create, delete, and save new versions of files, the changes are applied to your online storage. Um, you can have application data and settings syncing. So this synchron synchronizes the settings and preferences for the operating system and applications. Collaboration is another part of online services. This is where you are able to change a file at the same time as other people are working on it. This has become huge during lockdown where people have worked remotely at home and they can then work with their colleagues on the same file. Really useful. So you've probably tried Google Docs um, and you've seen there that you and your friend can be working in to totally different locations and both be editing the same document. Um, remember that online services are not a true backup and it's not really a recommended use for these kinds of services. Um, there's limited free space, but if you're prepared to pay a monthly subscription, then you can buy a little bit more storage space. And the different comp companies offer a combination of these features and what they offer changes regularly. The next um, online service is a remote controlling a computer. So you see this girl holding her head, it's like somebody else is on her computer, the mouse is moving around on the screen, she doesn't know what's happening. So obviously somebody else remotely is controlling her computer. And if you have the right software, you can do this. It could be used to do something illegal on somebody's computer, but usually if somebody wants to help you, where you have a problem and they're in a remote location, they want to fix something on the computer, they can use this facility. So on the remote computer, you would see exactly what is going on on the local computer as if you were sitting there. And you use your computer, the mouse and the keyboard, as if you were sitting at the remote computer. When you're connected, a window opens up on the host computer, 
showing the target computer's desktop, and then you work as if you were sitting there. You can make changes to files um, on the remote computer, but that will not reflect on the local computer. An example of a remote control software is called Team Viewer. A virtual private network is also called a VPN. What it is, is like a normal network, but instead of using cables or Wi-Fi to connect the different computers, you're connecting them using the internet. So it's called a virtual private and secure channel. And it allows you to work from a remote location as if you were sitting in the office working on your network. It has advantages in that it masks your IP address. Remember that your internet protocol address is a unique address of your computer on the internet. So it hides your IP address. It makes your online actions untraceable and it allows you to have a secure encrypted connection. A lot of people use VPNs for different purposes because of these advantages. A VPN is very useful when you need to log on to your organization's network and access files stored on the file server when you're at home or traveling. So they've been used extensively during lockdown with people working remotely at home. You can work as if your computer was connected to all the resources on the network and you can route all your communications through the remote net network and the advantage is that you trust the security. And that's all for today and keep working hard and until the end of exams, keep well.